What's up, YouTubers? Today I got something a little bit different. I have a box review of a 1993 Upper Deck Series 2. I opened all these off camera, and I'm going to review everything that I got, and uh, hopefully we'll have some fun doing this. I'm glad I opened these off camera because 25-plus uh, years in the pack, the cards were really crusty, like a teenage boy's tissue. Um... And it would have been an extremely long video busting all 36 packs. So, anyway, these two stacks over here represent all my, pretty much my commons. Nothing interesting in there, so I'm not going to go over those. Uh, we pulled uh, our checklist, a bunch of those. And Upper Deck tried to make them interesting by putting King Griffey Jr. there in the very, barely discernible photo. And we got a Roger Clemens, a couple of those, Roberto Alomar, and a Ryan Sandberg. So... Then we got uh, some team specials where they uh, had multiple players from one team. We got uh, the Astros shooting stars with Bagwell, Biggio, and Doug Drabeck. They could have called it fading stars and just had Doug Drabeck on there. But Then we pulled uh, Red October with the Cincinnati Reds sporting their extremely dumb sleeveless jerseys. If they wanted to look like a softball, a beer softball league team, they can just ditch the red undershirts. And we got uh, four corners with Gary Sheffield, Phil Plantier, Tony Gwynn, and Fred McGriff. I'll let you decide who doesn't belong in that photo there. And we got uh, the checklist with the Giants, Bonds, Williams, and Clark. And Clark. Big Giants fan, so that's a nice one. And we got the regular one with giant sticks with Clark Bonds and Williams. Could have called it giant dicks and just put the guy in the middle there. But And then my last, my favorite one, Boyhood Friends with Strawberry and Eric Davis. Or as I would have called that one, Blow Buddies. Because I'm pretty sure they were both doing the cocaine. So that was those. And then the team checklist concept that they've done since, I think, 1980. Or no, since 1990 was the first year they did it. I don't know if it was in the inaugural set or not with Vernon Wells doing the, the team checklist. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, probably since 1989. Anyway, we got uh, Jay Bell of the Pirates. Some really questionable players that they decided to make the team checklist of. Choosing Jay Bell, the utility infielder over Barry Bonds. Another questionable one here. We got Robbie Thompson of the Giants over... Barry Bonds, Will Clark, Matt Williams, any of those giant sticks would have done, but they do the light-hitting second baseman. Nigel Wilson of the Marlins. The Marlins were expansion and didn't really have any established stars, so Nigel Wilson, I guess, is as good a pick as any. Bobby overpaid for the Mets. Hal Morris for the Reds over... Geez, they could have picked handful of guys that would have been better than Hal Morris. Barry Larkin comes to mind. This one's questionable as well. Glenn Davis in the twilight of his career over Cal Ripken, obviously. Even newly minted Hall of Famer Harold Baines. We got uh, Danny Tartable. Goofy looking card with him holding an apple there. We got uh, Felix Jose for the Royals. Tim Salmonella, the Angels. Ventura, the White Sox, over Frank Thomas. David Need for the Rockies. Another expansion team, no established stars. Juan Gonzalez, steroid user. Joey Bell, breaking a bat because he had anger issues. The original artwork, I think, had him uh, knocking out a reporter. Uh, Travis Fryman for the Tigers. And uh, Steve Avery. They could have went with any of the other Hall of Fame pitchers. You know, Maddox, Smoltz, or Glavin, but they chose Avery. Greg Jeffries, Pat Mustache for the Brewers. Darren Dalton, right when he was starting to take steroids, I think. Shane Mack for the Twins over Kirby Puckett. And here's the ones they actually got right where you got a star player on there. We got Randy Johnson for the Mariners. Sosa for the Cubs. Bagwell for the Astros. Strawberry for the Dodgers. Andre Dawson. And that gives you kind of a sneak peek of how the cards stuck together. When I was peeling them, trying to peel them nicely apart, you see his face looks a little like he's got some white acne on there. That's from the cards sticking pretty bad. Same thing with the Sheffield. He's got that white eyeball going on. And 
Looks like a few extra earrings, but that's just the card peeling from being too sticky. And then we got a couple of Dennis Eckersley's, or no, just one Eckersley, Alomar for the Blue Jays, and another Andre Dawson. So that was all the team checklist. And then we had uh, a whole bunch of subsets. We had uh, Diamond Debuts, which was a who's who of failed prospects. We got Brent Gates, because we need multiple shots of Brent Gates running out of the batter's box. Troy Percival was the actual only name guy, so how bad is that subset when Troy Percival is the only guy that had a decent career? Tyler Green, Kevin Stocker, Tavo Alvarez, Rod Bolton, John Cummings, just a whole bunch of scrubs. So, And then Peter Gammons had a subset called By the Numbers. I actually pulled a few decent players there in another stack, I think. But this is a pretty crappy subset, too, the player selection. Dave Hollins. Uh, checklist card, Eduardo Perez from Major League Baseball Network, Dave McCarty, massive hyped failed prospect, uh, Alex Gonzalez, same story, Delano DeShields, he had a decent career, Travis Fryman, decent career, Ray Langford, decent career again, it's like a broken record, Dean Palmer, Phil Hyatt, another failed prospect, Geronimo Pena, Jose Offerman, Reggie Sanders, Dave Justice, sporting the early 90s side lines through his hair. Oh, I actually had a couple more of those team cards. I forgot about it in here. Rock Solid. Dante Bichette, Galarraga, and David Need. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hammers and Nails, the Phillies from the early 90s with their mullets and steroid users with Crook, Dave Hollins, Darren Dalton, and my boy Lenny Dykstra. I actually went to uh, Wikipedia, which is always a viable reference for facts, and uh, <laughs> The Lenny Dykstra page is so long with all of the the crap that he did, all the indictments and shady things he did. So if you want a good uh, bit of entertainment, go to his Wikipedia page and, and read his rap sheet. It's pretty fun. Uh, and then we got uh, the award winner cards. Cecil Felder was that RBI leader. Juan Gonzalez, a home run champ. Dalton, National League RBI leader. Uh, Pat Mustache, Rookie of the Year, and Eric Karos, Rookie of the Year. So that was those. And then um, we've got all the top prospects. And other than basically Carlos Delgado, Manny Ramirez, and Derek Jeter, you just have a bunch of hype jobs that never panned out. Kelvin Murray, I don't remember him being that hyped, and I was from the Bay Area, but he had the checklist and then... Pulled a couple of his base ones there. Mike Robertson, Rich Becker. He had a few years in the bigs. Rick Green, John Burke, Chad Matola. I remember him being hyped. Not panning out. Frank Rodriguez, Benji Gill. I remember him. Midre Cummings, Ray McDavid. Never heard of some of these guys. Brad, don't call me Chad Pennington. Butch Husky, he was kind of hyped. Charles Johnson, he toiled around. For a while, he might have been an all-star one or two years. Mark Newfield, Cliff Floyd, Michael Moore, before he uh, got political and made crappy documentaries. Derek Wallace, the Cubs, Dimitri Young, who's a big baseball card collector. Tyrone Hill. I don't know who that guy is. Mike Neal of the Ace. <laughs> Never even heard of that guy, and I was in the Bay Area. Huge Ace fan, Mike Neal. Todd Jones, yeah, decent career as a closer there. Pete Janinicki, and then uh, the actual name guys here. I got two Mannies. The first one had a lot of uh, sticky on his face there, unfortunately. Two Carlos Delgados, a lot of chipping on the sides there. And a Derek Jeter, which was out of the, one of the last packs I pulled. It's actually in not bad a shape. Not bad a shape? I don't know why I said it like that, but I was happy to pull at least one of those. So that was all my top prospects. Then I pulled the, uh, these are all just all my star players that I actually uh, collect on Dawson, Winfield, a couple of Dwight Goodens, Daryl Strawberry with a cool shot there. Daryl Strawberry always had good photography on his cards. All his uh, mid to early 90s tops cards always had really good shots. Uh, nice McGuire there. Tim Raines, Maddox, rubbing me out. Molitor, Dale Murphy. And the sad part about this Dale Murphy, I was a big fan of his in the in the 
mid to late 80s because we always had TBS and got to see all the Braves home games. But uh, he went to Colorado, I think, just because he knew the ball was going to be flying out of there. But unfortunately, he ended his career with 398 home runs. Only needed two more, but he couldn't get there. Eric Davis, Paul Merrill. And this is like positive proof that he took steroids. He's already 3,270 career at bats with 95 career home runs. 22 or 26 was his high at that time. And he's already a very established player with seven years in the bigs. Kirby Puckett, Fred McGriff, who unfortunately did not get voted into the Hall of Fame. He fell off the ballot today. Bo Jackson, Cal Ripken, Will Clark, Skinny Barry Bonds. And Alan Trammell. So that was just all my star players there. And I have the award winners of the star players. I've got McGriff, Gary Sheffield, Edgar Martinez, who got voted into the hall today. Barry Bonds with his normal sized head. I like that shot. Greg Maddox, McGuire, comeback player of the year. Steroids helped that. Some Eckersleys, and then. Uh, the by the numbers that were actually some star players. We had uh, Messina voted into the hall today as well. Bagwell, Bernie Williams, a cool chipper Jones, unfortunately, had a lot of chipping and sticky crusties on it. And a Pudge Rodriguez. So, and then some of the interesting things, not any stars here, but some of the, the funnier, lighter side of the packs here. I pulled three of this guy, Jeff Gardner. And I'd never heard of him, and I was just looking at the card, and I flipped it over, and the back of the write-up says, an excellent contact hitter. Unfortunately, he's got eight career hits and 56 at-bats for a 143 career batting average with no extra bates hits. So I thought that was kind of funny. So maybe I should go to Baseball Almanac and see if he got over the Mendoza line for his career. So we got a Ellis Burks here screaming his head off as he's, popping up and then uh, on the back side he's getting brushed back for I guess screaming too loud I pulled these two cards back to back thought it was kind of funny almost like the same angle except Dennis Muller's making a really funny face right there got the double chin action going on Bob Scanlon fielding the ball there but on the back side his neck is giraffe length that looked pretty funny. Uh, Steve Cook making kind of a goofy face, but the backside, really goofy face. <laughs> uh, I have too much fun with these. Mike Moore just pitching, but then grunting a fart out on the back there. We got Kim Batiste tagging Ozzie Smith out in the face. Uh, Milt Thompson getting hugged by a teammate. Nothing funny there, but then you flip it over. And a fan must have asked for his autograph for the first time in his life because he has no idea what to do with that pen. Juan Gonzalez teaching the kids the importance of steroid use. <laughs> uh, this is such a telling photo of Pete Incaviglia. He had 3,000 at-bats in his career at this point with 1,000 strikeouts. So this is how one-third of his career at-bats ended. So obviously Upper Deck knew that and chose that photo. Uh, we've got uh, Cheeto Martinez just taking some batting practice, but then on the back looking super creeper. And then we got, uh, I, I noticed a penchant for Upper Deck choosing photos with guys with broken bats and just getting sawed off here. So we got an ode to that here. We got Cecil Felder with a snapped bat, Jeff Blauser fielding, and holding a nothing but his bat knob. Kevin McReynolds tracking down a fly ball. And getting his twig snapped in two. The big cat is so big, he snapped it in half. Greg Myers, I don't know if it broke or if he just can't even hold on to it. But it's going flying, whatever. And then we got Jan Vanderwall holding nothing but a nub. And then we got Jim Abbott who has a hand for a nub. Or a nub for a hand. <laughs> Either way. So that was my... Uh, all the base here, and we'll end with my inserts here. I pulled a Walter Yoss, or Loss, I'm not even sure how to, sure how to say his last name, but it's a famous photographer. Unfortunately, a lot of the inserts were the very last 
card in a lot of the packs, so there's heavy chipping and damage. So well, you can see how savage that is right there on that Tim Salmonilla. And then we had the five-year anniversary. So they blackboarded them and put the uh, Upper Deck fifth-year anniversary logo there. We got Pat Listash, Carlos Baerga, Eric Karos with heavy damage there, Juan Gonzalez, David Justice, Gary Sheffield, Pudge Rodriguez, cool Reggie Jackson one from the Baseball Heroes, Nolan Ryan throwing the football, that's pretty cool, and the Griffey, which is actually in pretty good shape. I was glad that that was like the best one, even though you can see a little bit of the chipping there on the top, but that's actually one of the better ones I pulled, condition-wise. And then they had the future heroes, rather than being an established player and doing a 10-card set just to the one player, they had guys that could be future heroes, and we have uh, Kirby Puckett, Frank Thomas, and McGuire, so pulled pretty good players there. And then uh, these were supposed to be one per box, but I pulled two of the Then and Now holograms, which is kind of uh, a ripoff of Top's old super veterans from the mid-80s, but uh, Mantle and Mays can't go wrong with pulling those two guys. And then last but not least, I pulled the short print card, which is I think like one in three boxes. I pulled the Nolan Ryan. So that was my box. Uh, I paid uh, I think 25 plus uh, eight bucks for shipping on eBay. So about 32 or 33 was my investment. So, but I had a lot of fun opening it and I had a lot of fun going over the box review with you guys. So uh, let me know if you liked this format and uh, maybe I'll do some more like this and we'll see you next time.